I'm gonna come for number two. We're gonna do bell fighting and moves with my hands tied in the front. And after I do this, we're done for the day. And I'm going to post this shit. Again, I stress, do not attempt to do this at home. Do not attempt to do this if you had absolutely, positively no martial art training whatsoever. I used to train like this as a child. It was never actually put into action, but being trained this way means that I can do it. It's just not recommended in real fighting. Now, if you got a real fight with your hands tied in front of you, that's a whole nother ball game that you're about to explore versus your hands tied behind you. So we're gonna put this on first. Remember, close your eyes because it makes it easier when you open it so your eyes can adjust a lot faster versus not, you know. There are a lot of birds, so I will definitely be distracted because that whole perspective and sound thing, I like to call bullshit on that. Because once you start hearing birds, it's hard to hear other people or things or stuff like that. I have no idea where the, there it is. Okay, so it looks like I'm going forward instead of backwards. All right. Now, with your hands tied and your eyes bound, you have a little bit more um, options for fighting with your hands anyway. You don't have a lot of options for seeing. This thing is on pretty tight. So, block, 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 block medium, block low, block high. You know, you go to drill. Same thing on the other side. Block high, block medium, block low. You got to learn how to work your hands as a unit versus an individual. So we're gonna get back into a Wing Chun or a Southpaw stance. So you can't really see your attacker. So luckily for you, this is just training and doing things so that you get the feel of it. However, again, in real life, I stress that you do not attempt this shit at all. All right, so we're just gonna do moves to make that abundantly clear. We're gonna do moves. And hopefully I'm not gonna fuck myself up. Mm. So we're going here. Mm. Okay, mm. block, block. Return, block. Return, block. Return. Mm. Now I'm not gonna do any tornado kicks or any of that shit because I can't mm. see. I don't wanna damage anything. Boom, boom. Understand, block. Block. God, I hope I'm facing the camera. <laughs> anyway, if I'm not, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> all right. See the elbow. Block, elbow, double hand. God, I hope I'm facing the camera. Shit. I am not facing the camera. And I am tangled up. See, that's that thing about training blind. If you don't have a cameraman, you gotta remember where you step. I hope it at least looked good. So we're gonna do it again. I'm not gonna end the video. Just gonna keep going. Just gotta retie my shit. <laughs> all right, so I think you guys can all see me. And if you can't, well, it is what it is. All right, so again, I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna tie this thing back on. And I'm going to um, do more moves. Now, one day this week, if time allows it, and um, if I remember, I'll incorporate these and these and at least one or two weapons. All right? You've seen me do the weapons before. For you on Instagram, you can go to my Kung Fu Havoc number two and see me do weapons again. Scratch that. Damn it, my mirror. We're gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm just gonna get one weapon. I'm just gonna get my chain. It's a safer bet. Uh, safer bet that it's probably going to fuck me up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, this is where the big boys play. <laughs> this is a very dangerous thing. Please, above all else, do not attempt. Hopefully I'm far enough away that I can't do damage to anything. And hopefully I'm close enough to y'all where y'all can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, and we are being chained in the front. So this is going to be a clusterfuck and a half. Just to get that out of the way. It is highly possible that I am going to get fucked up. So it is highly possible that y'all should never try this shit at home. Okay? Just to get that out of the way. Also, be careful at tightening these ropes or anything around your wrists because you can cut off your circulation and that will really fuck up your day. <laughs> Saying that as I tighten up my ropes. Okay. So, here's where the fun starts. So I have both my hands. I have to learn how to use them as one hand. And I gotta undo this shit because something is tearing my elbow all to hell. Okay, hopefully that's both of the ends. Alright, so this is not fun, this is not safe. At all. It's also exceptionally hard. And now you see why you have to be careful. Because that can happen. One more again. And down. Okay. So there, I've incorporated some weapons inside this thing. It's right behind me. Somewhere. So now, this regular ass fight. Block, block. Got the chain. The hard way. Boom. Block. Boom. Boom. Forearm. Block. Knee. Elbow or forearm. God, when I was far enough away, hope it showed up. So therefore, you know, some politics can save your life or cost them your life. So if you're going to train, it would help to have someone who actually knows martial arts observe you, correct you, and make sure you don't mess yourself up. I'll be right back. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to go back to bound fighting first. Because you have to understand, if you're bound and blind, you're pretty much screwed. You're just bound, you have a fighting chance. Shit. Damn it. Okay. This, this belt buckle, it really sucks. Okay, that's as good as that's going to get. Alright. So the art of fighting with your hands tied again, knowing how to block high 
medium, low, high, medium, low. It's not going to be easy to get into a deep crane stance, but for Wen Chung, you're here. See how my hands are? So you can maneuver. You know, low. You'll be able to do it. You know. Now, keeping your boundings tight while training is hard, but it's a good and a bad thing because if your boundings are loose, then your, your blood's flowing through and there's nothing cutting off your circulation, which is very important when you train, do not cut off your circulation. Knowing the distance of your hands while fighting, that helps. So if you're going to do crane, that's crane, the beak is closed, that's snake, the beak is open. So, if you're going to do crane, you know, you have it, all right? You're going to do tiger, it's a little bit more difficult, you know, because tiger has range. I understand how that works. You have no range. So you have to learn how to adapt. Block knee, block elbow, block elbow, palm strike, you know. Once you know your certain moves, you're straight. Also knowing where you're going to send your enemy and what direction with what kick should send a person in certain directions. However, the reality of the fact is that even if I crescent kick you, there's no guarantee you're going to go this way. If I crescent kick you, you're running, boom. If you don't go this way, you could fall that way. You might not fall at all, which puts me in a bound because my hands are tied, literally. So I need to be able to recover from that. And you need to understand that in real life. You need to understand that things don't always work like they do in a dojo. Because, you know, in a crescent kick in a dojo, you should be going your momentum in the direction that I'm sending you. All right? So if you're coming at me and I use my left leg, you should be going to my left. Some people fall odd. So if you get kicked and then you fall in, I got to bring that knee in or that forearm or elbow because that's the only thing I have because I've already kicked you. If you look at where my position lands, boom, I'm over here. If you fall towards me, I got options. Catch you with the bindings, catch you with a forearm or an elbow, catch you with the knee and take over. So it can still be done. It's just a matter on your opponent's ability to fall in the direction of where you're sending them. If you're sending your opponent with a crescent kick and he comes in, like he's like literally falling at you, you got a problem because your hands are tied. Like literally, as you can see me working on this thing, trying to tighten it up, you know. Again, only do this shit if you're just making movies or if you're horsing around. In a real fight, I don't recommend it. It can be done. I just don't recommend it. All right? So... He's coming this way, bam, I cross and kick him. If he doesn't fall this way, and he falls this way, boom, I'm going to knee him. If I can't knee him because it's too far away, I'm going to elbow him or forearm him. If I can't do that, he may fall on top of me, which gives me two options. The first option is to get this thing under his neck, so it's like this, so I can get him the hell off me one way or another, you know, because I'm going to be pushing up into his throat. The other option is to scramble the fuck away from under him before we hit the ground. I might not get that chance. I will get the chance to put this under his throat. Alright? Now, for instance, I know how to fight with my hands tied. Literally. I've been taught this shit since I was like 12 years old. So I know what the fuck I'm doing. The problem is, you don't know who you're fighting. That's where the situation turns into rather this becomes bullshit or rather it becomes real shit. Your hands are tied, you're in a problem. Doesn't mean you can't fight, it just means the fight's going to be a whole lot more difficult for you to fucking win that shit. Understand how that works. Your hands are literally tied. Now, when they're tied in front of you, you have a fighting chance. When they're tied behind you, eh, you got a snowball's chance to hell, still a chance, but you don't really want to take that chance. And then if you're blindfolded as well, that means your chances are continuing to go from bad to worse, all right? Now, guy's coming at you this side, and you sidestep and knee him, because your hands are tied. Maybe that's your range of motion. Maybe you can't kick any further than that. So if you know what you can and can't do, then your best bet is a sidestep and a knee. 
after you knee him, boom, you can elbow him, you can back fist him, you can molly wop him with both hands. You'll figure out your options if you're ever in the situation. Now, for all movie purposes, it'll be fancy, you know, but for real life, fuck that shit. You're going to knee this guy and you're going to elbow him. And after you elbow him, you're going to kick that fucking lead foot that's beside your foot to the ground. Mm -hmm. So you're going to kick it from under him because you already elbowed him. Now kick it. Now immediately you want to turn and drop another elbow into him as you go down. Because you can wrap this around his arms. Or you can get on his back and wrap it around his neck. There are many ways to incapacitate someone while you are technically incapacitated at your hands. Mm -hmm. The more you know, the further you'll go. Thanks for watching. It's Kung Fu Havoc number two, BC and you. Instagram, thank you guys very much for letting me come back into your life.